Our last video in chapter 21 is going to focus on public policy and the relationship between public policy and innovation. And what we want to think about really is how much protection the government should give to innovative products, right? So how long should the patent life be for a new product? Um, how ironclad should trademark protection be? How long should copyright protection be? And there's actually a lot of debate um, in the economics world about how much uh, we should protect it because there's this balance between providing an incentive for entrepreneurs, for companies to develop these new uh, products um, and processes and having it diffuse through the economy, right? And so there are a lot of examples throughout history where things were not patented and so the diffusion took place uh, much more quickly and people benefited. Um, but on the other hand, we can see in a lot of areas that innovation doesn't take place because uh, it would not be protectable through patents or, or copyrights. So really those are our three areas where uh, the government can protect you know, these, these codifiable um, innovations that would otherwise be non-excludable, right? Um, so patent are, is uh, legal protection for an idea or innovation. Um, in the United States, it's generally 20 years. There are a few exceptions. Um, trademarks are about exclusive rights over a logo or name, registered design, usually within a certain industry. Um, so, you know, the Four Seasons Hotel can protect that trademark within you know, the hotel industry, but not uh, within other industries. Um, and then copyright is, you know, protects things like books and movies and music um, and prevents others from, you know, reproducing it or adapting it. And there, of course, there are some exceptions. You can, you know, quote things as long as you give attribution and as long as it's not uh, too much of it. Um, copyright has, has come under some attack because it's, it's gotten longer and longer and longer. Um, possibly through the intervention of companies like Disney uh, that have lobbied um, Congress in order to protect their patents, I mean, in their copyrights. Um, and I think that's an important concept, right? Because who is the author, right? Is the, if the author is an individual, then uh, that puts a certain limit on how long things can sort of be copyrighted uh, um, because the person will die and you can say, okay, well, it's maybe... 30 years um, for, for a copyright. But if it's a company, companies can last forever. And so companies are always going to have that incentive to try to extend uh, the life of a copyright. Um, so what we want to think about is how we create incentives to encourage uh, innovation, right? And so... We've got, you know, the old knowledge, we've got innovation investment. Um, if the old knowledge is patented, then that can prevent new knowledge from being created. On the other hand, the potential patent for new knowledge uh, can create a positive incentive. So there's these two balancing forces. Um, and then finally, we want the new innovation to spread out through society, right? We want more than one firm producing it, we want more than one firm trying to improve it. Um, and so that's a negative effect of patents. So if you think about it, we've got these two negative effects of patents that are holding back innovation and diffusion, but also one very important positive effect of patents that are encouraging innovation through innovation rents, right? And so if a firm thinks, okay, I can create this new product, this new um, medicine, this new process and patent it and earn innovation rents, I'm going to do that. But if you have these other firms saying, oh, I have this great idea, but I can't use this patented idea from this other company that I need that is holding back innovation. And so really what we want to think about is, well, how do we balance those two things, right? Um, how do we balance the, the benefits to others versus the benefit to the innovator? Um, and... You know, one way to do that is this idea of uh, a patent that expires at a certain time. And so, you know, the innovator can get uh, innovation rents during the life of the patent. 
Um, but then, you know, once they hit the end of the patent, there's that patent cliff um, and we get much uh, cheaper goods uh, in terms of the product and there's a big benefit to others. So, you know, we often see this, for instance, when a patented medicine uh, loses patent protection uh, and generic versions of that drug um, come into market. Uh, often, you know, the, the patented, uh, the patent holder will introduce some of these generic versions in order to uh, help protect some of their profits. Um, but we can also see that in other uh, industries as well. So the book has this model. We'll, we'll go over the model. I'm not sure how super useful it is. Basically, what we have is uh, the benefits to others, right? So that's the diffusion on the horizontal axis and the probability of invention on uh, the vertical axis. Um, we've got the ISO total benefits. So total benefits uh, is the benefit to the inventor and the benefit to uh, everybody else. And so those are increasing away from uh, the origin. And then over here, uh, we have, you know, whether or not we have an infinitely lived patent uh, versus no patent protection. And so, um, you know, if we have a, a very strong patent that is going to actually decrease some of our benefits, um, there's maybe some place where that is maximized, where we get the maximum total uh, benefits to the innovator and to everybody else. Whereas if we have no patents, then uh, the probability of innovation is going to be pretty low. Uh, and so that's going to decrease as well. So theoretically, maybe we could come up with some optimal amount of protection right here at point A where the two are tangent. Eh, maybe. I mean, I think it's probably going to vary based on the industry, um, based on how much innovation is happening in that area, um, based on the type of product. Um, so, you know, it's not clear that there is one patent life that is optimal for everybody. Um, you know, some, some products can be brought to market immediately. Some products are going to need, you know, multiple years to bring to market even after uh, the patent is filed. Um, so, you know, it's always a balancing act, right? And as a, a public policy, uh, thought, what we really want to think about is how do we balance those, uh, the benefits to others versus the, the probability of innovation, right? We want to have lots of innovation and we want to have it spread out as fast as possible, but oftentimes there's going to be uh, a trade-off there. So... One thing that government can definitely do is fund basic research, right? So uh, in the United States, the government does that through things like the National Science Foundation, the National Institutes for Health. They provide a lot of funding for universities um, and other researchers to provide that basic research. And that provides increased knowledge for everybody else to then innovate off of. Um, we can also think about, all right, well, you know, how long should copyright be? How long should patent protection be? And we want to think about both, you know, the incentive to innovate, right? We don't want to destroy the incentive to innovate, but we also want to diffuse that um, from for a long time. Another solution that has been tried throughout history is providing prizes uh, for solving a certain problem, right? We could come up with a prize for you know providing a vaccine to a disease, or we could come up with a prize to solving some technological problem uh, that will benefit everybody. And so in that case, the idea is, all right, yeah, there are gonna be costs to innovation, uh, but then there's this big prize that uh, you would get all of your innovation rents immediately, but you wouldn't then get patent protection. So that's, that's a possibility. So, you know, government has a really important role to play in innovation and uh, balancing all of the various uh, incentives and benefits is a really important role for government. And if government gets captured by uh, corporations that, that stand to benefit the most from, you know, things like increased patent protection, increased copyright protection, uh, then that's going to hurt the economy as a whole.